Yeah, thanks so much. And um, I saw Gabrielle Hayden was in the Zoom at some point. So thanks, Gabrielle. This is partly done. Uh, this lightning talk was adapted from Gabrielle's lightning talk. She gave it Force 11. It was also influenced by ongoing conversations and paper drafting with both Sarah DeMott and Gabrielle. So um, thanks a lot. <laughs> So just a brief overview to orient people to what exactly I'm talking about when I say qualitative data analysis. This is the systematic collection, organization, and interpretation of unstructured data largely. Um, interview transcripts, public documents, focus groups, survey questions, images of cats. Um, after a close reading of the qualitative data, researchers will assign codes, and you can see sort of what that looks like in the visual yellow is rescinded support, blue has a few, um, yeah, which uh, will be then assigned to relevant quotes or sections of video, audio, and images that will then become the methodological, uh, the, pardon me, theoretical underpinning of uh, the researcher's analysis and further work. And what qualitative data is not, it is not anything automatic. So it's a good rule of thumb. So people, when you discuss qualitative I've, I've found this misunderstanding quite a bit, so I just wanted to address it head on, like text mining, keyword extraction, sentiment analysis, word counts, and word clouds. These are all quantitative methods that take qualitative data as input. This is not the same as qualitative research method. So what I'm talking about when I'm thinking about uh, qualitative is you have some text audio images, you are doing really deep, close engagement if you can click a button and make something go, chances are that it's not actually like a qualitative methodology. Um, so because qualitative me research methods don't have any scripts or software dependencies that affect their analysis, what does reproducibility really look like for this type of work? And this is a very short lightning talk because I'm just giving you my pitch. So my pitch is that reproducibility for qualitative work is simply openness. Um, we heard a great talk about uh, how you can sort of share and mitigate risk with sensitive materials. And I would say a lot of those same concerns are echoed in qualitative research, especially because it is like we're interviewing refugees or, or immigrants or really at risk populations. So how can we balance sort of the need for openness as it's reproducibility with those is a really great question. I love how it was explored earlier. But for me, since you can't click a button or look at a script or do any of that, the closest we can get, or what reproducibility rather looks like for qualitative, I think takes three forms. The first is opening the data that underlies a study. Um, and there are three examples of common repositories that host qualitative data. Obviously the qualitative data repository in Syracuse, um, ICPSR, and the UK Data Archive also has a, quite a bit of qualitative data. And then the other part that is really the bread and butter of qualitative, I would say, is open methodology and protocols. So there's a great initiative that comes out of the qualitative data repository folks called ATI, which is all about annotating people's manuscripts with like methodological notes so that when um, people describe their analysis work, so say, I found most people of XYZ group talk the most about family you can say, I coded family anytime they talked about direct blood relatives, not friends that they consider family. So these sort of very key, um, key factors in qualitative analysis that would affect a reading of materials later on. And then I would also say what's been sorely lacking in the qualitative space, but is really important for reproducibility are open tools. So if you get an Atlas TI file, but you don't have $600 to download and, uh, you know, get Atlas, this is just as big of a problem for reproducibility as, as any of the others that I've mentioned. So that luckily there are a few things filling the space. Qualcoder, which works for Windows and Linux. Qcoder, which is actually an R library for qualitative analysis. So I particularly like it for mixed methods where I have to do some qualitative analysis and then maybe I want a quantitative component as well. And then full disclosure, I work on Taget, so Taget, um, which is just really simple, upload text and tag it. So the idea for qualitative research is that forefronting openness of methodology, data, and tools is what reproducibility looks like for this, pr this particular methodology. And so I'll stop sharing, and that's it for me.